Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. I'm your host Vaughn Troidy and I am the Steampunk Desperado. With me today is my lovely co-host, Arliss Holloway. Hello. Also known as Mrs. Desperado. Yes, I am. So today we're going to talk about something that is not steampunk, but it is a classic movie that has had an indelible effect on our popular culture. Mrs. Desperado and I agree on a lot of things. I mean, our taste in movies is pretty similar. Except for this one. Except for this Except one. For this, and I'm talking about the great Fight Club. <laughs> so. Uh, and I wanted to do this video. And the, the reason I did is because apparently only me and about 10 other people in the United States do not care for this movie. So being one that I want to reach out and find those who, who feel the same as I do, um, I, I'm not in love with this movie and wasn't from the beginning. So let's kind of break it down in just some points, not the whole movie, but when just in some points, and we'll just give our point counterpoint. Uh, we're not here to change anybody's view. Uh, if you love it, that's great. Don't understand it. If you hate it, <laughs> ugh, me too. Um, but we're just here to just give our opinion. Yeah, I'm all about I'm all about airing different opinions. So, so I've been looking forward to doing this. So a little bit of background, a little bit of background first. Uh, it's a 1999 movie starring uh, Brad Pitt and Edward Norton, and it's uh, based on a 1996 book by Chuck Palahniuk. Warning: spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, spoilers if you haven't seen it. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, when the movie first came out. When the movie first came out, it was kind of the box office dud, but... Yes, it did. Even Deuce Bigelow made more money than this movie. But but later on, when it came out to DVD, it became a cult classic. It became really popular. People were quoting it. There's even websites that that have taken some things from Fight Club as far as part of their identity. Uh, the, the famous website Zero Hedge, for example, all of their staff writers are called Tyler Durden which is the primary character, at least the Brad Pitt character, from Fight Club. So let's, let's go in a little bit about, uh, basically, and it's a, movie, it's a movie about a lot of stuff, but one of the things, major things, it's a, it's a club where men you know, go after work to beat each other up, yes. basically. So basically, the other title for this movie could be, Stop Hitting Yourself, Stop Hitting Yourself. Because that's a spoiler. Yes, it is a spoiler, <laughs> and I don't care. Um, so the first rule of Fight Club is don't talk about Fight Club, and I believe that the rule was established because nobody should talk about this movie because it's dumb. So um, Vaughn had seen the movie before um, from the moment the movie started. Now, I'll, now, okay, you know what? I will be honest with you. For the first, um, if you wanted to move, uh, divide the movie up into threes in the first part of the movie, I actually liked it. I love the visualization. Who doesn't love Edward Norton and, and Brad's Pitts? So, you gotta love the abs between them. And Helena Bottom Carter. Oh, and of course. Playing Helena. the love interest. Oh, the really it, kind of psycho love it interest. Yeah. It was um, pretty if, amazing, too. If you, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, psycho so, love interest. So, the, <laughs> so the first <laughs> part of the movie I thought was really very well done. Yeah. Um, it's, it's narrated, if you will, with dialogue, uh, along with dialogue. And the Edward Norton character, the narrator, does not have a name. No, he does not. He never says his name. Some call him Jack, but they just call him the narrator. Yeah. Uh, we'll get into more of that toward the end where mm -hmm. I really spoil everything for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but I did like it in the beginning. Um, I, again, the visualization, the cinematography, the lighting is very dark and gritty. Um, it goes along with all this angst um, that the narrator has about his life. And then comes Tyler Durden. So this would be what I would consider the middle of the movie. Yes. And, and this is when it gets dumb. <laughs> and Brad Pitt is Tyler Durden. And he's this guy that uh, Norton randomly meets and... They are standing out, I don't know, in, in the middle of the, in the middle of, behind a building. I don't remember why they're there. Anyway. Narrator's apartment anyway. exploded. Anyway. And anyway, they're, they're standing out, uh, it's, it's nighttime, and uh, basically Tyler Durden says, hit me, hard as you can. And they ba basically have a brawl. Uh, in, which is witnessed. Yes, which other people witness. And that's how they, they create Fight Club. 
Uh, these other people are interested in, in a fight club. Their rules include, like, don't talk about fight club, which is makes it makes it irresistible that everybody knows Every, about fight club. Yeah, and everybody talks about it. Yeah. So if it were true and it wasn't talked about, the movie wouldn't even exist. Right, exactly. So nobody follows the first rule, which it repeats not. three times. So it very quickly escalates yes. into where it's fight club. And everybody just loves beating up people, bare knuckles, bare chest. Uh, so if you like sweaty man-on-man -man action... There you go, abs yeah. galore, yeah. Uh, sweaty abs galore. Yes. Um, but then it, it it just it just quickly goes into where it's it's just brawling and everyone's beat up. They go to work the next day with bandages and all this kind of stuff. I, I um, ran into a door. <laughs> even even if this were true, which again the spoilers in in soon to come. Even if this is true that they are beating each other up in the the basement of some of some place. Um, it, w it would be noticed by loved ones, by employers. It just goes untalked about. So the only people who aren't f talking about fight clubs are the employers who see their employees and their loved ones who see their loved ones beat to shit. So, oh, I guess... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, warnings about... Um, because I'm actually being pretty good with my language right now because of how much I hate this <laughs> So the middle part completely disappointed me because I just didn't buy into it. I didn't buy into the world. I didn't buy into the characters. I didn't buy into Fight Club. Um, even though um, uh, Helena is just the most beautiful and best actress, I think, um, up there uh, in my top ten, I, she was a disappointment to me in this movie. Well, I believe she called it in. She's a, she's a complete psycho in this movie, which, which I She's enjoy. not even a good psycho. It's not even a good developed psycho. Um, so, uh, so then, let's just go into the spoilers, because everybody knows it. Everybody who has seen Fight yeah, Club knows. Most people with Anybody who has with an opinion if on not, Fight Club I'm going to spoil it for Club. you. Okay. Yeah. There is there is no Tyler Durden, or is there no narrator? So the point is, is that he's got either a split personality, the narrator that is, or um, that he's developed Tyler Durden in order so that he can be all um, anti-establishment, um, anti-capitalism. Even though in every freaking scene there's a Pepsi machine, there is a Starbucks cup. Um, there is well, destruction. Irony. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it isn't. Irony. Because trust me, he got money for it. So here he's going, oh, anti-capitalism, but hey, you know, he claims he didn't take any money from the, the Pepsi products or the Starbucks placement. But I tell you, went back into that movie, uh, my favorite character in the whole movie, Meatloaf as Bob, the boobs. Yeah. He's my favorite uh, character. Boobs. I think that he is probably the most genuine in all of them. Um, as far as the character development and as far as everything, is Bob. So watch for Bob. That's, that's, also, a, that's another phrase that entered our, our culture. His name is Bob Anderson. Uh, after, after he dies, they talk about him in the present. Because Fight Club becomes a cult. And so everybody, basically their names go away. You don't have a name when you're, when you're in Fight Club. And they all live in this barracks in, in the bottom of this huge house that uh, the narrator and Durden have have uh, Supposedly, yes. yes. And, and when he gets in there, he says that when you flick one light, another light goes off. And yet, all these people are living there. The, the, the place is lit up. Yeah. It's, it's, and, it's absurd. And it's, the, it's ridiculous. And, and the thing about it is that after you die, then your name comes back. So, so um, Bob gets killed in a kind of a, one of their pranks, one of their uh, kind of anti-capitalist pranks gone awry. Domestic terrorism. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and therefore they say his name is Bob Anderson. And I've actually seen that on the net, people talking about people who have died uh, from violence, uh, his name is or her name is. It's kind of interesting how that entered the common uh, speech. And, and I understand cult classics. I mean, I, I enjoy them too. But I, I think that um, the, the main anti-establishment anti 
moniker that they put on this movie that this is to show you oh you know we hate capitalism we we hate li um, living to earn money to buy things okay we get that all right this is not 1950 we understand that we understand that we want to live for the day live for the moment and not live for things we got that that's beat over our head every time we go to the movies and here they just put it all into one movie and then they make it absurd so that you were to believe that Tyler Durden or Jack, narrator, was beating himself up in the alley with two people who walk by and go, oh, that's really weird. We're just going to walk by. No, you know what they would have done in real life? They would have baker act his ass is what they would have done. They would have called the police and say, this guy is going to hurt himself or somebody else. There is no way in the world today that they try. They have Starbucks and Pepsi, so it's this world. Well, yes. But this is the, this is kind of a seedy part of town, and, and people tend to like ignore trouble in a lot of those places. I, I, I didn't buy into any of it. And the the middle and the last, and I'm sorry, but the last the last part of the movie, which is this huge crescendo of explosions, of this realization that he is Tyler Durden, or Tyler Durden is he, and they are the one the same person, and he's holding hands with, with Helena and her lovely little figure as they're looking out, and all these buildings are exploding, and we're supposed to go, yay! Whoa, and he supposedly shoots himself in the cheek in order to get rid of Jack. Or, I mean, no, Tyler. Or, he gets or, rid of Tyler. or who is that he's getting rid of? Is he, was he Tyler Durden all along and then it was Jack he got he invented? We don't know. So, no, we don't know. Because so in, the, 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 there's what you call an unreliable narrator. You know, and, and even though and I know what, I know what you're going to say, that in Blazing Saddles, he beat himself yes. up. Totally yes, different that's thing. That's what you totally, I did because I saw right there on the notes. I, saw, I cheated. <laughs> This right here, we're supposed to take as the most anti-anarchist um, movie of its time. This is, this is going to be their movie, um, The Anarchist. And we're supposed to believe that he's beating himself. And from there, he builds a club of, of people. So are all of them beating themselves up? Is that a dream? And everyone's there actually beating themselves up and not each other? And then the domestic terrorism. Sorry, not funny. And I don't, and I don't get how that fits in. To um, to the overall meaning of the anarchy, domestic terrorism. I don't get it. People are going to get hurt, and I don't get it. And I don't even want to go with the soap. You guys can just watch it and just deal with the soap. That was what confused me at first, and the reason I didn't see it right away because of the very mysterious, the mysterious poster with soap on. It. Like what soap? What's exciting about that? But here's here's my take on it because I do need to to, I'm sorry. to have my take on it. So first of all. I know a lot of the reviewers say the deal is that it's anti-commercialism, and that's just one small aspect of it. The way I see it, it's more about the emasculation of the modern male. We're, we're not allowed, if we spread our legs too far apart on a subway, we're being toxic. If we explain something to a woman, we're being toxic. In the, in the old days, two men had a disagreement, they'd take it outside, they'd have fisticuffs, they'd slug each other until, until somebody was satisfied, or whatever. I think there's a, a deep-seated deep feeling among men, we have this underlying aggression that, that gets completely suppressed by modern society. And I think that was one of the major takeaways from Fight Club, is that, that, that the narrator and Tyler tapped this, and, and basically no, turned it into a cult. Because and, and there's no other place that you can get your aggression out. Not, not through, through um, actually boxing. Not through football. Not through um, soccer. Not through in, any of the other things we have well, out yeah, there. I mean, you, in order for you to get your little testosterone out. I mean, because I, don't, I didn't realize that was a thing. Um, that I mean, when you explain something to a woman, it was toxic. That's No, I think they call it mansplaining. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, we tune you out, so it's okay. <laughs> so so. I mean, it's it's symbolic. It, it's not it's not necessarily meant to be uh, taken seriously. Obviously, it's it's a it's a movie about a crazy person, and 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 nonetheless, I mean, yes, there are outlets, but but in general, society has become a lot less friendly to males, in my view, and and this is one of one of the reasons that I think that Fight Club takes off so well in, in the context of the fiction. Second point I want to make is that having read the book, 
and I went back and read the book. Amazingly enough, uh, the movie follows the book very, very, very closely. It's, it's astonishing because usually that isn't the case. Until the very end when, when we start to suspect that Tyler isn't real. Now at that point we say, at that point in the book, it's, it's determined much earlier that, that Tyler isn't real and the ending is completely different. And you know, you kind of assume that the ending is a schizophrenic fantasy in, in, in my view. And the ending of the book He's he goes he's put in a, in an asylum. That's where he belongs. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that sounds like a better. I'm not saying ending. that it is, but it, it's kind of a downer. <laughs> the ending is kind of a downer in in the book. Now the other the other interesting thing about the book is that um, Palinuk and I I read some of of Palinuk's notes at, on the on the writing of the book. First of all, it started out as an an exercise in like a writing class. And then what they did is he started talking to people about interesting or weird things that happened to them, and he incorporated a ton of these into the book. For example, the, uh, the narrator's job at first is he's an investigator for an automobile company, and he flies out to see, is this accident bad enough so that we can recall the car, or should we just basically uh, pay the lawsuits when people die? I mean, things like that. That was one of the very cynical things that was in the movie that was based on real life. Some of the ideas, that they're so crazy, like the soap, the soap project is, is pretty funny when you really think about it. No, I th in my opinion... Gross but funny. My, in my opinion, what it is, is again, it's, it's creating a soap that made from the fat of fat women. So they can liposuction turn liposuction fat. Yes. Liposuction fat. They didn't kill anybody, um, and then turn it into soap, and then therefore sell it back sell to these same, the same women. fat women. <laughs> so or 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 other women or or whoever we get whoever. liposuctions. Not to judge that, um, but no. I, I mean, I didn't find I didn't find any of it ironic. I didn't find any of it. Now I I am the first to admit that I'm really tough. On movies, I'm very tough on, especially movies made in the USA, because I think they all suck. Now there are certainly some that rise to the top and and surprise me. But yeah, and that's more one, like, and you're saying more recently, right? I mean, more. Oh, oh of course. Oh. I mean, you, you talk about, about Hitchcock. Oh. Um, yeah. You're you right. know, people. You're right. We're talking. Coen Brothers have made some pretty awesome stuff. Absolutely. Um, Agree. Yeah, and. Uh, but anyway, you're on your third point. Yes. The third, well, I was also going to say, uh, as far as the as far as the incidents, I always also love the incident at the beginning, where the narrator becomes addicted to these uh, self help groups. Uh, he goes to all these cancer survivor groups and pretends to be a cancer survivor, and that makes him feel better about his own life. I thought that was that was pretty pretty funny. I mean, in a dark way. I have a very dark sense of humor. Um... And that's where he meets Meatloaf, for example. Yes, yes. Who, by the way, had had to wear fat pads. So look, um, there is a blooper. When they're running into one of the rooms in the house and Meatloaf falls, he falls down, stop it right there, and you'll see that his pants drop down to his ankles, but they decided to keep it in because it was such a good scene, and you can see the fat pads on his legs. So just look for that. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to find the... But go ahead. Yeah, he was he was a testicular cancer survivor. Oh, that. Yes. Hey, see, I didn't find I didn't find that ironic or funny or anything. I found it um, misleading and weird. I, I don't I don't see how it fit I'm, in at all. Weird, I'll agree. Misleading, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it's misleading. So, what is it supposed to say? That he's just so pathetic that the only thing that he can he can do is be with these these. The narrator. Then okay. The narrator is pathetic. The narrator is. Or yeah, slash as Jack. Opposed, I don't know why they call As opposed Jack. to Bob. Okay, as opposed to Bob. No, Bob is a um, cancer survivor. Yes. And um, we're not dissing Bob here. No, I like Meatloaf. I told you he's my favorite character. Um, although he dies. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but his name doesn't. Go figure. So, no, I didn't. I didn't see. I, 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 I didn't. I didn't see. And please comment below. Enlighten me. Yes. We're, we're not here to change anybody's opinion. I just think the movie sucked. Continue. And I, and I thought it was a classic. I, re, I really did. I mean, 
it's not meant to be it's not meant to be taken seriously. It's an allegory and it's a commentary on our society. I didn't take it seriously, so I did that right. Okay, good for you. <laughs> so in conclusion, I I think we can each give it our separate ratings. Yes. But, um, so, go ahead, give your in conclusion, and then I'll give my in conclusion. So in conclusion, I thought it was, I thought it was, it's an amazing and quirky movie. It's certainly not for everyone. There's a lot of, I mean, there's, a, there's, there's violence, there's sex, there's bad there's language, no and, and all that stuff. There's implied Well, implied sex. Okay. I'm implied sorry. sex. And, and, uh, a lot of, a lot, and some kind of morbid humor in there. And so it's not for everybody, but I do think it's it's brilliant because it's unusual. There's very, very few movies that break the mold in America. Everything's formula, and this is one of those few that was not formula. So on my scale of rating, I would give it five out of five beers. Wow. Really? Yes, yes. Absolutely. More than some of the animes we've seen? Yes, more than some of the animes we've seen. Okay. <laughs> So that's okay because if you have to average out um, our scores together, mm -hmm. it'll be fine. Um, so I felt the first part of the movie was very promising. Um, part where he's going to all these where meetings. where he's going to the meetings and he's because they're establishing this character. And, he's a sad sack. And he is. He he's pathetic. Um, although I don't really understand why because he has everything. Um, he can't sleep. He has thing. He has insomnia. I hear you, um, but the I mean, he's but then it, it just quickly goes into where he's obsessed it, with it's, IKEA furniture. Yes, which I don't understand <laughs> either. That that was kind of a, a, a curious. My hat won't stay on. Uh, but then I think it slipped into pandering and just relentless um, assault. Uh, on your oh, senses yeah, that's good, regarding <laughs> uh, that's a good word. regarding um, this the the anarchy and the anti capitalism and things like that. I just I just felt that they just seriously, all puns intended, beat you to death with it. Um, I felt that it was way overdone, and I and I didn't buy into it. And then the last part, uh, you know, finally um, when he did this little bit of trickery, and uh, you found out that they were one and the same person. You know, instead of going, oh, um, as in, um, um, Sixth Sense or something like that? Thank you, Sixth Sense, where you're going, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't really see that coming. I'm not saying I saw it coming. That would be a lie. I'm saying that my reaction to it wasn't, oh my goodness, it was this. <laughs> so, I, I can't give it anything. Um, if I had to, it would get a quarter of a gear because I didn't think it pro it delivered anything that was that was promised. I mm -hmm. it, at the end, I just I just we don't usually divide the gears into fourths, but we may make an exception I will. this time. I will. I just I just did. So differences are okay, and um, it's fine. I have absolutely no intention to ever watch the movie again, and I'm sure Tyler will be okay with it. And I'm I sure actually he's went. Fine. And I actually went and read the book. He went and read the book. So that's okay. Um, please comment below. Did yes. you love it? Did you hate it? Please, is there someone out there who despised it as much as me? Um, and it's not just you go, oh, the movie's meh. No, I really hate it. I really do not like it. And I will tell you that my my adult children, my um, fellow co-workers, and um, not my boss because he's never seen it, all disagree with me. So I have not found one person who agreed to, with me that Fight Club sucks. So please, if you think it sucks, comment below. Like and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching our our debate and rant. <laughs> and uh, the gloves, the gloves. Oh, Where are the gloves? Oh, Where are they? Where are they? Like it. Okay. Here's some antique gloves. Yeah, cool? there we go. For our Fight Club theme. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> ah. Here. Uh, so I'm your host, Vaughn Troy, the Steampunk Desperado, saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. Extraordinary without Fight Club.